All right. Welcome to Power Rankings for week seven to nine. We're back once again. Even more salty about some how some of these games went, but as we'll see know, later right? down, we've got some changes, so this should be fun. Yep. All right, let's just uh just skeet skeet over to the next slide here. So we got thirteen to sixteen. Yep, these are basically the people who've already been eliminated. Uh, I believe. Yes, I believe all of them have been eliminated as of week nine. Pretty sure uh, about that. Let me check weekly recap. Demons. Demons is out, isn't he? Oh, is he? Is he in it still? Oh, yes. He uh, technically, he could still make it. He would need a massive swing. Yeah, he could. I think he's got to like win out too. Um, he has to win out, and he has to like. Oh no! He, well, he'd be eliminated. We're recording this obviously during week ten, and it looks like. He's two and eight now, so I think he's actually yeah. Okay, he, he's he's out now. But, yeah. Uh, as of week nine, he still had a chance. So not a very very small one. Not too many surprises. Code actually dropped three places. So Code was in thirteenth last time, and Marker was in eleventh last time. So they both dropped pretty significantly because they've kind of just been like losing, losing out yeah. <laughs> in this last yeah, stretch. Yeah. <laughs> that that's kind of been what what they've been doing. <sighs> I mean, um, I don't know if we can offer any constructive criticism besides play better. Play better, yeah. I, there's not really much more we can offer in terms of that. I mean, honestly, honestly, I feel like some of them are some of them have decent reps sometimes, but they play bad, and some of it is just them bringing the wrong stuff. Yeah, right. I, I mean, in Code's defense, he did play Archit. Um, but also to that, he lost to Demons, who's above him, and he lost to Tiff, who both of them are like barely above him in the standings. So uh, that's kind yeah. of why he's last. Marker lost to Evie, who's barely above him in the standings. So, or sorry, in our powering, he's not even above him in the standings. So uh, that's why Marker dropped significantly. He also <laughs> lost to Hamu and lost to Shade, who's also barely above him in the standings. So. That's kind of why they're there. Same with Eevee, losing to Byron, Necro, and then beating Marker. I mean, we had Eevee lower, and then he got above Marker because he beat Marker. Yep, pretty much. Uh, I think I think we had Eevee uh, pretty much sitting at the bottom for most of it. And uh, then he jumped because Code lost and Eevee actually beat Marker. And I seem to remember him not playing super well either. Uh, which is kind of why Demons is a little bit higher, because you know he got wheelchaired by Vanderil, but then beat Code, and then didn't get super wheelchair. Oh, sorry, he took a forfeit against Profit. That's why he's this high. Um, yeah, yeah, it was just a, pro a forfeit. Yeah, so we we didn't change the rankings for forfeit because, like, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> no, who scheduled better? <laughs> like... I mean, I mean, to be to be to be honest, it, it does help Profit with his chances of playoffs, uh, which we'll come to. Because uh, the splash division is really competitive right now. Man, that's that's a tough division to call. Uh, that's probably the yeah. toughest division to call. Like, I think it's pretty obvious. Um, yeah, I mean the the whole adamant else. conference is done. Uh, Zap yeah. division, uh, Boomkin needs one win. We we'll get to that. Shade could sneak in. Could sneak. Uh, in. not really. Uh, as long as Boomkin wins one, Shade cannot catch up. No, but he could sneak into a wild card spot. Yeah, yeah, the wildcard spot that that would come down to how uh, Necro and Profit do. Yeah, so we'll sort of see. These last couple yeah, weeks we are going to be clutch for the Lustrous Conference, but mean pretty much nothing for Adamant except for seeding. Um, and even then, I think as long as things stay constant, seeding is going to be pretty obvious. Um, yep. Uh, so at, at the moment, uh, I believe uh, Hamu is still going with the same system for the for the playoffs. So the best uh, record gets to pick their preferred second place opponent. Yeah, but they can't pick the other so wild card opinion. Uh, or sorry, they, they can't, they can't the, pick the other division winner. Pick, well, yeah, they can't pick the division winners and they can't pick the wild card from their own division, as far as I know. Wait, so uh, then they don't get a choice? No, so essentially, let's say Smoke Oh, wait, Man they could is, choose. They could Smoke choose. Man has the, the best other... record, right? So he could choose anyone between uh, Hamu. Barry or oh he can choose from the other conference she i didn't know yeah that. yeah yeah, right. yeah yeah yeah, right. yeah, yeah. that so, actually gives a choice then okay yeah yeah the basic every the, the first guy has three choices the second guy has two three technically uh, oh yeah sorry yeah because of the thing and then it's two and then... uh could have three or two depending okay. on whether the oh. the whether 
uh, their division uh, second place got picked or not. I didn't remember how it worked last season, so that's that's fun. Cool. Yeah. So that's moment picked up shit. That was fun. Oh god. So that's thirteen to sixteen done. Let's just move on to twelve to nine here. Um, yeah. So we got profit in twelfth, even though he has a better record than all yeah. them, because again, uh, the the fact that his win was by forfeit. Yeah, he didn't play super... He lost to Archit, which was a tough matchup, to be honest. And then he lost to Boom, so... Uh, we didn't move him lower yeah, it was because... also a tough matchup. Yeah, like, he, he'd been having tough matchups, but he still hadn't been winning those games um, since our last episode. Our, yeah, I guess our last episode. He basically hasn't won a game except for a forfeit, so... That's, yeah, that's and why he's staying to be fair, years. the forfeit was probably a winnable game, but we didn't, we didn't get to see it play out, True. so... He, he may, have, he may have got more differential from that, may not have, so... Sort of... Yeah, 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 definitely. Then we've got uh, Tiff, who Tiff I believe has Code. also been eliminated. Yeah, she beat Code, lost to Barry, and lost to Snowman. So again, two really difficult matchups and a match that she absolutely had to win. Unfortunately, she probably had to win against Snowman or Barry. Um, <laughs> she made some yeah. crazy. She made a crazy couple crazy reads against Snowman, uh, but he pressure stalled. Oh yeah, I believe in the God Chump, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those were good reads. Um, she, and, and, he pressure uh, installed out the hair cross with P2. <laughs> yeah, believe me when I say uh, making hard reads that catch no man off guard are hard. Yeah, that was... It's, it's really hard. I, I don't think she played poorly at all in that. I just think she had a really bad matchup, and it was sort of a mix of much more experience um, and weird sets, obviously. It's no man. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but... To be to be honest, I, I think a lot of it is coming down to uh, the 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 main issue that her team has, which I think I picked up on uh, Way in, in the, the post draft. Little recovery. Uh, yeah, I I feel like uh, I feel like she missed the trade window to actually do something about it because well, uh, honestly, I feel like a lot of her games could have gone different if she didn't get chipped down all the time. It definitely would be a more effective strategy if she was comfortable with it. And just sort of volt turning around and being able to gain momentum, um, which has been kind of lackluster. Uh, we ended up seeing it. Spoiler for her week ten match, she ended up sacking Mega Beedrill on a turn where she could have just given up health on Top of Finny instead, um, and Mega Beedrill just like rolled through Hamu's team, the set that she had. But unfortunately, it just died for free, and that's kind of what set did she have? Happening. Because uh, drill run, knockoff, U-turn, poison jab. Yeah, yeah, that would have that would have actually been a, been a big had issue. Absolutely uh, nothing for it. So he got he he was uh, put I mean, in a really good position. Yeah. Have you seen Have you seen the team? Uh, because I I know what Hamu's team was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so he did have uh, stuff for it, uh, but uh, yeah, it was a mon that was going to cause him a decent amount. Oh no! Amount of actually, issue. sorry, I can't see it because he still doesn't unblock me. <laughs> yeah, I think who's he playing next? I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, he he did have he did have stuff uh, for it, uh, nice but it was gonna be a, it, it it could have done a lot more. It could have pulled back differential. It could have brought the game down to like maybe if she crit something or maybe something like that. Um, I feel like that's that's been a pattern uh, with a lot of her games in general, though. It's definitely been like, a like, struggle for her to get momentum in these, which is the. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like uh, the other thing is that Especially her volt turn mentality. is really fast volt turn, uh, and and uh, probably a slow uh, slow turn somewhere would have been appreciated. Uh, perhaps. Uh, because um, the idea is that you want to bring in these fast, frail, hard hitting mons and in as well, right? But like if your U turn is so fast, you're gonna be bringing in Jolteon and taking a hit, for example. Well, I, yeah, I mean that's not the point of Beedrill Jolteon. It's not about yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's not the, that's not the point. It's about threatening them, something uh, out and then bringing the other one in, and then threatening something out and then bringing the other one in over and over. And yeah, over definitely, and over definitely. But uh, something, something. Uh, I, I guess it, it's. I don't know. The the, the team looks good. Uh, she's not played terribly. I think it's just come down to uh, the team's not had great matchups against. Yeah whom she's played. I'm definitely not a fan of Finny as the water on this, like, ever anymore. Holy shit, it's I, so I, bad with Entei. I'm not a fan of Tapu Finny. It's like, like the that. synergy with Entei is just complete anti-synergy, and I would never draft that combo. 
uh, honestly, I, I think I think Tapu Fini's issue here is that it also uh, while it protects her own team against uh, status, uh, it, the problem is that she's running. Like I'm telling her to run status, but Finney's on the squad all the time because it needs to be taking hits. So it, it's really it's a lose lose situation. It's also her basically essentially her only defogger really. Uh, so and, and and she has uh, NT and Virgil, really so speaking. it's not like she can't bring it. Yeah, but yeah, like, trouble. yeah, maybe, Let's just move on maybe you'll see something more next season. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Torn, he he has been kind of just. I, I think he's had one of the hardest uh, lineups of players he's had to face. Uh, yeah. I, look, I haven't seen all of his matchups. I just he had like sort of lots of mid ground opponents this past week. Uh, he had Necro, Byron, and Barry. Uh, yeah, and, and he lost all three of them. Uh, I believe Barry. It came down to him just, uh, essentially, him getting fucked by that one Sylveon set, and Barry was that one Sylveon set. Uh, yeah. he was in a very commanding position. He he definitely was. Uh, and and um, I I will bring it up with him later. Uh, but basically, he didn't calc uh, specs Dark Pulse on Salazzle. And. Uh, it was a 75% chance to Oko. If he preserved Salazzle, I think he won the game in the end game because Barry had zero ways of answering Scarf uh, Sludge Wave. Oh my god, like I'm looking at Torn's team right now. Why would you bring Combine Mono Hyper Voice? Was it against Torn? Did he have yeah. Psy Shock? Like this makes absolutely no sense to bring. No, no, no I think Hyper it was Wish Protect. Um, this team is not weak to Mono Hyper Voice at all. There's double poison and a clef key. Yeah, 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 like, so, uh, basically, because he threw away the Salazzle early, uh, to get the damage on Zoroark, uh, it was a, it basically ended up uh, costing him in the end game, uh, because if he'd gone Klefki there, that, that Dark Pulse would have done nothing, he would have got, gotten, like, the 10% off on Zoroark that he needed, he would have found out that it was Specs, uh, and he would have just been able to pivot into Salazzle later and, like, sludge wave through. Yeah. Uh, the Dragonite set worked though, which, it was, did. which yeah. was really cool. That really bulky Dragonite uh, was pretty fun to watch. Uh, really bulky Thunder Wave, Roost Dragonite. That was really fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how Bulky he started play... out. He hasn't been playing all that bad. Yeah, um, he's just had a very tough lineup. Like, like when you start and you're facing like Archit, uh, Archit Snowman, Vanderil. Uh, yeah, it's not that yeah, easy. That's true. And he's won. Like his his winnable matchups, like he's not thrown away his winnable matchups. It's just been uh, those are tough. his wins as the winnable matchups. Yeah, th- his winnable matchups are his wins. Like yeah. everything else has basically been fifty fifties or just too bad, a, a very bad matchup. <sighs> uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, well. So shade shade has been turning up, turning up at the end of the season here. Yeah, most of his uh, although. Good stuff. Oh, fuck me. That week seven match against Barry was the most. <laughs> Good lord. Hey, Hax is a win con, man. I... Hax is a win con. I mean, it was, right? We talked about it a little bit at the end of the week four to six one, but good lord, that was such a horrible match to watch. It, it was, Speaking of horrible yeah, matches to watch. Very, very winnable in terms of him. He beat Marker and then lost to necro which i don't quite remember i probably am blocking it out of my memory for some reason uh wait let me just go look at it right week eight, week, nine. week nine week nine i mean uh i don't remember exactly what happened here so live watch of the game here um bu- 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 getting dunked on scolipede oh yeah, yeah 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 he thought he thought that the the thunderbolt was a rule but he just got uh ended by metronome all right he didn't get it hmm. he didn't get a flint oh actually necro necro had hyper voice primarina which is really good prep for sub scolipede so wait uh, uh if i'm not wrong i i'm uh, he oh, could have just didn't kill. Aria, right? Oh my god. Yeah, he could hmm? have used Sparkling Aria. 
I mean, it's it's, uh, it's exactly still the same. Ghostbusters the sub. Yeah, uh, but and, it would have healed. It uh, would have healed the burn that he had from Scald. So I guess that's uh, yeah, idea. yeah. But um, it also means he would have been able to run torrent and boost the water moves, and Primarina was low. Uh, I, I, he still I don't could think have been torrent. Came into play. He still absolutely could have been torrent. It could have just been a normal uh, hyper voice rather than a water hyper voice. I guess. I, I don't think it was though. Let's look at his team, I guess. Where is it? Uh, I, I think he still has. Oh, input. it was liquid voice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah. He could have been torrent sparking area. And then Nihiligo just cleaned at the end. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Shade played bad at bad that game at all. Yeah, Necro he just, just had... He Necro just... had really specific prep that you would never expect if you were prepping against it, so... Yeah. Huh. So, Granted, I don't know if yeah. I would set up a sub in front of Primarina either. It doesn't seem like the best of ideas, but... I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a terrible idea. Like, uh, if if he didn't have the... It's just going to break it with Scald anyways, is kind of the idea. Yeah, yeah so... but if he didn't have... if he. Uh, yeah, breaking the sub is one thing, but like, uh, I, I'm I'm guessing maybe it was just for the speed boost. Could have been. I feel like protect is just better there though, especially against the Celestia team. Yeah, but like, uh, maybe maybe the idea of the sub was to pressure the switch because uh, maybe he won't, maybe uh, Necro potentially could have scouted for uh, Z poison. I, so if you sub up on that, something comes in, you get your sword stunts, yeah, and then you can clean. I mean, I don't see why Z Poison is ever the play against Necro's team is the only thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. How much does regular like, poison You basically in? have to be Z Fight or Z Rock to break Celesteela with Scolipede. So. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Uh, or, or even Z Water, uh, just for a strong neutral hit at plus two. Yeah, I mean, but so yeah, like... Z superpower will do more than uh, Z Aqua Yeah, 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 but like uh, Aqua Tail in general is uh, also pretty spammable against uh, Necro's team uh, versus uh, being forced to click superpower. Yeah, I mean, Actually, Z Stone Age is probably a better idea. Let's see the Thundy too. Okay, well, anyways, we don't want to spend all day. I'm talking about Shade's yeah, team, but yeah. he's been playing well. That's that's really all there he's is. He's been playing well. He still has a chance, uh, but it comes down to how Necro and Profit play out because it's not under his own uh, control yeah. anymore. Unfortunately, well, he okay. To... Spoilers for Week Ten: He wins, so he's only one win back now of Necro and Profit. But neither of them have played their Week Ten yet, so he's in. A... Yeah, and uh, he's looking at now, Necro's probably. upcoming Week Ten. Uh, well, it is against uh, Profit. Profit. Yeah, so, so... one of them is going to lose. Um, yeah, granted, that and, doesn't and... help Shade at all, because they're sitting in wild card. Like that's fighting for the last yeah, wild like, card he spot. He needs both of them to lose. That's the yeah. problem. <laughs> or he needs, uh, or he needs Boom to lose. Um, and, and every single game from here on yeah. out. That I honestly, I think that is his best bet, probably. Um, un luckily for him, he plays Boom in week twelve. Yeah, so but, we might see something there. But right it probably before won't that, right before that, he plays Demons. Yeah. So you know, is, who uh, knows. Like so, so that week twelve game may not even matter. Yeah, we could uh, see that it not matter. Okay. Yeah. So moving on. Five to eight. Mm. We've got oh, five to eight. There we go. <clears throat> um, Lord, Lord Barry. Barry, who hacks his way to wins. Now it probably looks weird that he's a seven and two team sitting in eighth, but his games have been really to watch. bad to watch. Like really bad to watch. Grant, you know he went. <clears throat> three and zero this cycle, like all the power to him. They were yeah, games but... that he absolutely should have won in the first place, um, but they have not. Been and <laughs> almost lost, but then won. Yeah, in at least two of them. I don't remember how his game against Tiff went, but um, definitely against uh, Shade. The, and... uh, I believe the the game against Tiff came down to Ente, Bandit Ente missing a Stone Age on Alatios. Alatios. Uh, yes. That explains it. Yeah. So we haven't been moving Barry up for winning just because the games have been really bad. Um, shout outs to you, Barry, for, for watching this and, and everything. Yeah, but the, 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 reason, the reason he's not moving up is because at some point the luck will run out or, or he's going to end up facing a player that's, that's too luckier. good to get hacked out. Yeah. Like, uh, we'll see. 
it's it's going to be very difficult for him to uh, essentially uh, catch somebody like archit or snowman off guard with a weird set and it's going to be difficult for him to hack their teams out because their teams are so solid in general yeah. uh, so and he's facing he's facing vandal next so i guess we'll see he's got a tough uh, he's got a tough last three weeks actually uh, he he really does have a tough like i could see a situation where he ends up going 10 and 2 somehow um, but also a situation where he goes 7 and 5 Yep, yep. And I, uh, I don't know if it'll matter or not. Um, to be to be honest, I think I think at this point, uh, as long as he either actually, wins definitely. a game, he definitely needs to beat at least Necro, uh, in week like because he plays the two people fighting for a wild card spot behind him. So those are yeah, like, yeah. As long as he wins one of really those cool. games, I think he makes playoffs though. Yeah, most likely. I mean, he could honestly he could probably make playoffs even. He could go that. seven five and make playoffs um, because obviously Necro and Profit play each other. So there's yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. So so definitely a spot. Uh, Actually, no. He, I, I think he has playoffs uh, he, pretty much wrapped up as long as he, as long as some results go his way. Like he doesn't need to win a game to make playoffs. Wait, um, as long as he wins one of them, uh, then he clinches. I think because because Necro and Profit play each other. Yeah, yeah. Because Necro and Profit play each other, so so he at best one. one of them can only have seven wins, right? Yeah. Yep. So he definitely just needs uh, to win one of his last three to clinch playoffs. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, and that much. way he stays at a range of Shade. No, Shade, yep, can, shade can't hit Shade at he can best hit can go, He's already uh, out of range. Six. Yeah, he's already yeah. out of range of Shade. Um, yeah. So he's so, really only worried about Necro and Profit. And yeah, okay. So, you know, Barry is probably making playoffs. Necro. Um, and we have Necro next. Yeah. Uh, Necro has so, been playing really well. He's on a five-game yeah, winning after, streak, pulling a season out of the depths to pull into a playoff spot right now. Yeah, essentially starting 0-4. So, yeah. Uh, and, and The drops clearly helped. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> not being weak to word switch. Jeez. Imagine that. Imagine not losing the momentum. Crazy yeah. thought. No, he's, uh, he's put on a clinic in the back half of the season here. Obviously, he won all three games, considering he's on a five-game winning streak. He was probably yep. expected to win all three of those. They were all teams that are currently below him in the standings. So, definitely expected wins for the most part. Um, and, yeah, and, and the his... win against Shade really helped because uh, it basically uh, put him out, uh, put him in a good position yeah. for the wildcard slots. To them. Especially that one, yeah. He's also got a tough last three weeks here against Profit, Barry, and Vanderil. Um, yeah, so the, the the good thing is that whether or not he makes playoffs is under his own control. Uh, he just, as long as he beats the people he's fighting against for playoffs, which is basically Barry Prophet. And technically, we still have Vandril in a position where she could be caught. Yes. Uh, which is her differential pretty is interesting considering though. the season. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, like... She could be caught simply if she loses her games and uh, somebody wins out. Yeah, like, like, she's, on, she's on just a raw record. I, I don't think she's a, a lazy battler though, so I don't think that she's gonna end up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I don't think that's gonna happen. Like, uh, in any case, it just uh, matters. Uh, as long as she wins one more game, she can't be caught. Yeah, he's gonna win her division. Byron is next, and he's obviously clinched already. He can kind of just cruise, yeah. honestly. Uh, unless he really wants to fight for that wild card three spot, which honestly doesn't matter. I don't see him winning the division. Snowman's the division leader. There should be no reason that Snowman loses that division. Any games from here. Um, so I think Byron's probably going to stay around this sort of area. He's obviously a playoff contender. He's been winning games in sort of like small ways and losing in small ways too. It's been like reasonable. He actually close. lost pretty big to Hamu. Like he, he just had no way to break through Toxapex plus Cofagregus. And uh, I don't I don't I don't like the fact that his uh biggest hitter was a fully stab uh, Megalopani uh, against a team with Cofagregus because that, that just meant that in the end game he had no way to beat that one. Yeah, I probably would have preferred something else, but and, and you never know. Honestly every single time uh Lopani came out, Hamu went Kofagregus and just sat there. And, and at some point, he just got calm minds and uh, that, that was a dumpster. Oh, yeah, there's actually been a few closer games in there, but he's had some a couple blowouts here. Boom, wheelchaired him. He wheelchaired Archit. Um, 
and then he wheelchaired Torn, and then got wheelchaired by Hamu. So um, yep. he obviously yep. plays Snowman next, and if Snowman wins that game, then Byron can't even compete for the division, and so he probably just doesn't try very hard against his last two opponents, who are both knocked out. So I think we'll see a fairly yep. calm end to the season here for Byron, um, as he obviously basically has nothing to play for in the last three weeks here. Yep, pretty much. Um uh... We already went over Wendell's yeah, stuff. Yeah, we talked about her a little um, bit. The reason that she's fifth uh, is because the teams above her have been playing kind of out of their mind. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, she's been really consistent, yeah. uh, but she, like we mentioned uh, in, probably in all the episodes at this point, she's had a fairly easy schedule. She obviously didn't yeah. have to take on Snowman. Um, and she's she's lost the two games we expected her to lose, and she's won everything we expected her to win. Yep, so pretty that's much. pretty much been it. So uh, her, her game against Tamu, uh, where was that? Was that week eight? Yeah, week eight. Yeah. That was that looked like Tamu was in control, and she pulled that one back pretty well. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, so yeah, she's done. Uh, she's play, basically played to her level, and and she's. Played well with a team we didn't expect to do well. Yeah, uh, I mean, she we did really make some it. trades those at drops, the end of week eight. Uh, those, I like those drops a lot for her team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, she basically upgraded everything. Well, okay, so she upgraded Magneton, right? But then she didn't, Magnezone. she didn't downgrade Cresselia that much to Uxie, and she didn't downgrade Mian Xiao that much to Machamp. Yep, like, yep. She, uh, she, she and, kept and, the same momentum uh, levels. She gained a rocker out of it. And uh, Machamp, I think, probably fits her team a bit better uh, in every way except for its speed tier. She she lost uh, she lost speed uh, with the Mianchar drop, but I feel like she can just make up for that. I mean, uh, anyway. I don't think it's necessary because her speed tiers are already kind of trash, anyways. So she's just kind of embracing the bad speed. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, uh, I don't think we need but... to sugarcoat that. Her her team is very slow. Yeah, and it's very fat, but uh, I mean, obviously that leaves her open to fast, hard-hitting breakers, right? Which which we saw in her game against uh, Archit uh, way back. We saw it in her game against uh, Boomkan, where uh, Mega Latias, Latias just uh, completely went in. Staraptor was a big threat. Uh, I don't think Staraptor actually got to come out much, though, um, or come out at all. But yeah, like, uh, Mega Latias just kind of went in on this whole team. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, like, the, the any of the Latias kind of just go in on this team, to be honest. And what, uh, what happened? Why'd she drop two places? Uh, because... She beat everyone, uh, didn't she? Oh, sorry, yeah, she lost she... a boom. Sorry, she lost a boom. Yeah, yeah, she lost to him. She lost. Yeah, so that's uh, why that's why she's week. that's why she's lower. Obviously, you guys can yeah. logically figure out who the top four is if you know who the coaches are. Um, yep. But that's what happened. Okay, Pretty so let's much. just move on to the top four then, because we're already at that yep. sort of stage. Uh, we've obviously got Archit, Snowman, Hamu, and Boom, and the top. And three... we finally have movement at the top. Yeah, the top didn't really move, like super significantly, but they did move, and we we. We mentioned it wasn't going to move that much if they were going to move, but um, they did move. And that's because of the Week 7 match between Archit and Snowman kind of tilted everything from 2-1 to one and 1-2. to two. Yep. Uh, Hamu's moved up because Vandal dropped. Uh, yes. As Boomkin moved up ahead of her as well. Yep. Uh, yeah, Hamu's basically played well. Uh, we, we already discussed Boomkan, right? So uh, we discussed the fact that he beat Vanderil. Uh, he lost to Snowman. I mean, uh, can't which fault was... him for that, really. Yeah, and he actually pulled it back. I, I think that's the the best somebody's lost to Snowman. Uh, it was a 2-0, uh, and it came down to a couple of rolls on a beast-boosted defensive Porygon. So yeah, that's tight. cancer, yes. No, yeah, that that's the best someone's lost to Boomcan by a long shot. Or sorry, f uh, lost to Snowman. Yeah, I, I, except Archie who beat him. Before, yeah, before that, the best loss was a 4-0, like taking a 4-0 against Snowman. So 2-0 is yeah. definitely um, something to be proud of there. Uh, 
So yeah, uh, we 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 probably would have seen more movement if Snowman had actually somehow lost that game. But uh, he recovered from his loss against Archit pretty well. Uh, went on to win the next two games. In fact, went on to win the week nine game pretty well. Yeah, I, I would say a six zero is pretty pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Hamu again. Yeah, Hamu. He's just been he's played well. He's he's lost to Vandal. That was uh, but then, loss, but he he had control early on. Yeah, he had control. Uh, he lost to Vandrill, so uh, in the interim, he was actually not doing well, but then uh, he dumpstered uh, Byron completely. <laughs> so a, little like, bit of a, a little bit of a wheelchair right now. Yeah, um, and and he won his game against Stiff, which we would have expected him to win. I mean, obviously, Archit um, beat Snowman, so he moved up and then also won the next two, so he stayed consistent there. Uh, Yep, uh, and and he has a pretty uh, chilled out end to the season coming in as well. But I don't. Think... Yeah, well, so does Snowman and so does Hami. Like they're all clinched for playoffs already. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I I don't believe there's a way uh, for Archit to actually overtake Snowman in terms of differential. So uh, I don't think he's gonna get the first. Well, he's fourteen. Olympic. There's fourteen. He's fourteen differential behind. So. I, and, and there's there there's are mathematical ways. Play for. There are mathematical ways to do it. Yeah, but considering how Snowman's been playing, uh, all it's yeah. going to take is like uh, I don't think uh, it's realistic. Another six so. I don't think it's realistic by any means, but mathematically, he's still definitely in range of of uh, claiming the first seed in the league. Yeah, but uh, we actually might see Snowman beat his record from last season. Yeah, I think that's possible. Uh, what was it? 11 1 41 yeah and he's 11 only, 1 plus 41 only nine differential behind that i think that's definitely possible yeah and uh i i don't see him dropping a game honestly boom obviously has the most to play for out of these last three but even that is not that much he just needs one win and he can secure his uh division spot already um, yeah if he win a spot. if he really wants to he can fight for first in the conference against vanderl um but vanderl to be Van fair, is gonna the... be gonna be fighting with Barry for that for that divisional spot right now. So, to be fair, just looking at the 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 spots, uh, the the picks, right? Like uh, having the third playoffs opponent pick or the final one, it doesn't really matter all that much. Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, that's true. Basically... They're, yeah. So he he can probably relax um, after one win, or he just beats Shade in, um, in week 12, right? Week 12? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, just beats yeah. Shade in week 12, and he's in anyways, so, uh, he can just win one of his three, and he's guaranteed playoffs. I mean, that's, that seems pretty realistic for Boom, and how his season's been going, so, uh, we could definitely see that yep. being a thing. So, uh, Did we wanna... it's interesting, it's interesting, uh, if you look at it, that, uh, Necrozma and Zygarde have kind of stopped taking kills now. Well, have they, though? Necrozma broke 20. Yeah, it broke twenty. That that that's good. But like, I think it broke twenty in like week seven or uh, already, and it's just been sitting there for the last few last couple of weeks, though. It's uh, interesting to see a couple of these. I, I wasn't expecting Mega Garchomp to be as successful as it has been. Yeah, I wasn't expecting Mega Garchomp to be the one putting in the most work on, on a, a team, team with, with Darkrai Dark and Aegis Slash. Yeah, I mean Aegis Slash is bad, but our uh, Darkrai for sure. Yeah, actually, Aegis Slash has been putting in more work than Darkrai as well, I think. Yikes. Uh, Seriously? No, 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 no. Uh, not in terms of kills, but uh, the the way the way he's been the way he's been using Aegis Slash and Darkrai to just pressure opponents, it's been really good to watch. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, I feel like it's kind of a situation where uh, people are so afraid of Darkrai, they're just making their teams vulnerable to his other Pokemon. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the whole idea behind drafting Darkrai, and that's why it's kind of a questionable allow outside of Ubers in the first place, is because it it's it puts on that pressure by being so fast and by being so strong and having a yeah, really it puts on that it, it puts on it puts on that pressure, yes. Uh, but I I I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of other Pokemon that do that as well. Uh, I I I know uh, Azu does that. Uh, where people are so afraid of the belly drum Azu that they they kind of just make their teams vulnerable to uh, other Pokemon. Uh, 
So basically any mon that can like hit hard hit fast uh kind of puts that pressure on dakra is just really good at it it's probably the best at it uh of the available pokemon really that's why it's in ubers <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i mean and... fast dark type like dark types don't have the best resistances to them and typically well Typically, uh, especially this because it tends really to carry good, coverage so. for its uh, resistances anyway. Like, like gets large form, it gets uh, psychic. So uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think hard to... the main thing is that Keldeo's kind of opened a lot really easily with Aegislash and Darkrai. Um, because yeah, psychics, especially especially with Keldeo being one of the best answers to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, Keldeo's really Keldeo's done really good, uh, really well. Um, yeah, in general, the team was always solid, yeah. and uh, it's it's been piloted by probably either the best or the second best player in the league. Like, uh, hard to say uh, just based on what we've seen of their performances in draft, but uh, knowing uh, what I know of Archit as a player, especially because Snowman seems to be unable to beat him, except for last season. Except for when he brings the wrong team. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that's, that's pretty, pretty much... It. There's not a yeah. whole lot more to talk about. The kill leaders, I mean, they're a little bit disappointing in terms of what you'd normally expect to see. But there's some... I mean, know, some of the mons things. you'd normally expect to see are there. And, and it's nice to see that you normally don't see doing well. Because uh, a lot of these mons usually go undrafted. Like mons like Mega Gardevoir, Mega Garchomp. Even... Um, yeah, Mega, Mega Gardevoir, Mega Garchomp. Uh, I, I think I've seen Blacephalon go undrafted a couple of times because people don't think it's value. Uh, it's so definitely... It's, it's very... Well, it's definitely not value. Um, a Tier 1 Fire Ghost type, like, there's definitely better options for people to take in Tier 1. But as a free yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, it holds a lot more, for sure. Actually, I think it's his only Tier 1. Well, he saved it all the way until last, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like, he used all his and everything. literally the last else. round pick. So, yeah. I uh, mean, because he avoided it, he was able to grab Lacephalon, and I guess it holds that value typing-wise. Um, yeah. It doesn't really offer much speed-wise to the team. Yeah, I, 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 don't think it's, I, I don't think it's a great one to be picking uh, early on, because um, honestly, I think... Sh yeah, I, I do agree. Chandler probably picks up way better value with the same typing and... Uh, Essentially the same stats. A better ability, well, kind really. of. I don't know. I mean, it, it has a way to hit water types, so. <laughs> yeah, with energy ball. Yeah, yeah. I mean, shadow ball is really good. Like, people tend to not have great goals with this. Well, that's the problem. Is that you can only really bring like a dark or a normal, and dark types yeah, I... typically don't get recovery. I mean, you're mainly looking at like Umbreon for recovery-based dark types. So, yeah, and, and uh, normal types, a down. lot of people end up not drafting them. Yep. Ghost spam um, is definitely undervalued, but the, the other thing is that ghost spam isn't that prevalent, right? Like, there's not a lot of fast ghosts. When you think about it, it's pretty much Blacephalon, Gengar. That Chandler. You... Yeah. I guess Chandler's not fast, but it, it, like, hits really hard, and, like, with a choice cuff, it's really fast. So there's a lot of, like, slower ghosts that put in work. Um, Alolan Marowak. Yeah, we, we just saw Kofagricus dumpster a guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you don't really think about bringing normal type for those mons in particular. You kind of think about it for the other ones, like Blacephalon, Gengar, and Chandelure, yeah, and they, yeah. they typically just trick the fat normal anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's nice to see that we... we even, even top two, right? Like Necrozma, you don't see it put in this much offensive work. No, you um, definitely don't. It's, you, you you usually see it being drafted as like a stealth rock recovery, uh, like like back wall that just sits there, which it still is. Yeah, it still is, but uh, even even the offensive side is so fat. Also, God Earthquake having forty four kills. Gotta hate it. I hate that move. Yep, I agree. I'm glad <laughs> that Pamu is thinking of banning it. <laughs> <laughs> He's also thinking of banning me from ever taking Zapdos, so fuck that. Well, it's interesting because if Earthquake does get banned, a lot of mons... Get Stomping Tantrum now. Well, that's true, but you also are going to see a rise in value of Magnazone when things can't run Earthquake on it. Um, 
Mm, 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 I think it's going to be yeah. a lot more prevalent, and that that would actually be. I think that would be really interesting to see sort of how the meta develops around not having earthquake because it's so common and it's so spammable with the base 100 power. Like stomping tantrum yeah. maybe doesn't stomping pick tantrum. up. Stomping tantrum probably doesn't pick up the same KOs that the level right. of an earthquake, earthquake would. Right? Obviously, I, I mean even even thousand arrows doesn't pick up KOs that does. I, I've seen uh, the the choice band Zydog. Uh, I, I've seen it being I've seen it being run with both moves. So like, if you've eliminated the flying type, or they just don't just come and use spam earthquake, yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. All right. Well, I don't have anything else. Um, do you have any other points that you wanted to discuss? No, that's pretty much it. Like I've uh, forty minutes here. Yeah, the the playoffs picture is looking pretty uh, solid, stable. Uh, <clears throat> We kind of know Splash what Splash Division has a lot of stuff to play for. Yeah, we'll sort of see. Oh. We'll sort of see. I, honestly, I, I don't think it changes all that much besides maybe a flip between Necro and Profit, depending on depending on who wins that game. So that'll be really interesting to see who slides into the last wild card spot there. Besides that, I think it's pretty set in stone. Yeah, um, the last wild card slot, we've got three people playing for it. Everything else pretty much set, looks set in stone. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, well, thanks guys for checking us out once again, and I believe we'll be back at the end of week 12. Yeah, pretty much, uh, which which probably will be slightly different. Yeah, I think I, we, I we, we might include our predictions for um, how oh, we should the playoffs are going to go. Definitely include our prediction for playoffs, because I think that'll probably be the last uh, episode of the season, so... Yeah, yeah, because after, uh, like, I don't think there's a point in making power ranking videos during playoffs. No, not at all, not at all. Okay, well, again, all right. bye guys. Bye.